quick. I don't know who put this together, but Dad's been using this stuff for two or three years. <laughs> now I got a quick story. It reminded me of these balls of whiskey. Uh, we were on the Mexican border, well hunting. We went into Mexico. And Dad bought about 12 bottles of scotch in Mexico. And we were coming through Texas. He was in the back seat. He said, I'll make a cross of my scotch. So he's in the back seat drinking scotch. And my buddy, we're in the front driving, going through them little Texas towns. We were pulling a trailer, and it had a Jeep on the back of the trailer with our gear in the, in the Jeep. And I'd go through the little Texas towns, and I'd hit the brakes, and the gear would move, and the Jeep would honk. Beep, beep. Dad said, who is following us? He rolled the back window and said, come on around, some bitch, damn. <laughs> that's right there, that's on the hunt store I can tell, but... <laughs> I'm glad y'all came. This evident dad has a lot of friends and family here that love him. And uh, Dad, I love you. He's my best friend, a business partner, and happy birthday. Do it home. Huh? Anyway, here's Mark. That's not right. I cannot hold those to satisfy James. <laughs> uh, well, I don't have a whole lot to say about him. I'm going to tell you. I've known him, what, 20? How long have I been married? 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. I've known James 20 years. Uh, I knew James uh, Ginger quite a long time for met him. Met James, the story I know about him. If we were at some school administrator's uh, program in Little Rock, and uh, Ginger, you know how she is, she'd always take care of everything. And uh, she, she made a comment, she said, there's this, she said, I met this guy, and she said, you know, he wants me to come to California. He's out in Los Angeles, some kind of business or something. I said, well, are you gonna go? She said, well, he's bought me an airline ticket. I said, Ginger, if that son of a bitch is dumb enough to buy you an airline ticket, you better go. <laughs> They're married now. I thought he was going to tell something on Jane. I didn't realize it was going to backfire on me. <laughs> but it did. Okay, Tap has something from the class of 65, Central High Helena. And let me tell you, this bunch parties every year for their reunion. Yeah! <laughs> The, the pre-parties are always more fun than the party. They are. They are. Uh, we like to meet about once a month and have a good time and plan the party. Yeah. And every, we have, our class has had a class reunion every year, every five years since we graduated. And we've had a good time. But I also want to tell you a little story about James. James will call me sometimes. And usually it's when he's out cooking a steak and having a drink. And he called me one. I was, I was working on, on a project in Kentucky for about a year, and I was living up there in a hotel. I said, Jane, I said, I've never been a bourbon drinker, but I'm, I'm starting to learn how to drink bourbon. And uh, I've decided that I am going to go to the big warehouse liquor store up there. I said, I'm going to go over there every week, and I'm going to try and find some unique different kind of bourbon that you can't find outside of Kentucky, or maybe you'll find it outside of Kentucky, but something that's hard to get and it's supposed to be a real good bourbon. And I said, I'm going to buy a bottle every week, and then when I come home, we're going to have a whiskey sampling down at the Hunter Club. And uh, so James said, well, if you're going to do that, if I send you some money, you just buy me a bottle of everything you buy. I said, well, James, 
I said, you don't have to send me any money. I said, I'll just, we'll just settle up when I get home at Christmas. And I said, I'll bring all the whiskey home at Christmas. So at Christmas time, I came home, and uh, James had said, David, David, I'm sorry. He said, we have a gathering at the warehouse on Friday night, and I'm going to take this whiskey down there and share it with the warehouse. Well, come Christmas, and I came home, and James said, how much I owe you? I said, you owe me $1,000 for $20 whiskey. <laughs> so it wasn't, you know, I mean, this is some rare and different stuff. And I had, I had gone online and I typed up a thing that described each one like out of the bourbon kind of sort of magazine, you know, this one got whatever flavor and chocolate and whatever. So anyway, so James, James came to home, gave me a check, and uh, I gave him his bourbon. Gave cash. Gave cash. Oh. And that's good because the cash money goes into my gun fund. <laughs> so, a month or two later, I talked to James, and I said, I said, how did that, your guys at the warehouse like that whiskey? He said, I ain't shared any of it with <laughs> He said, I drank it all. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> can follow up on this. We're going to have more. If you have stories, you let me know. But right now, well, I have a request. The ladies have told me they want a jam session with James. And James only. So you guys can all stand around and just watch. But And ladies, I have a request. When you get out there, you, you have to, you can't jump back in until all the other ladies have had their shot at it. So you might, you only might get to get in there one time. Okay, got it. Let's go. Happy birthday, James. Hope you have another great 70. Happy birthday, James. We're enjoying your party. Happy birthday, James. I know you're hating every minute of this. Happy birthday! 